Hello again, everybody. This is Mr. Everything, and I'm coming back at you with another Wargaming and Miniature video. In this video, we are going to be focusing on flags. Flags, this is the topic of this video. We're going to be looking at a bunch of different manufacturers and what their flags look like. We're going to compare them. I'm going to show you what they look like on the card. We're going to talk about their, their gloss. We're going to talk about the uh, paper quality. We're going to also be talking about the actual image of the flags and we're going to uh i'm going to show you some finished product uh and from different manufacturers and why i think some are better than others and then at the end of the video what we're actually going to do is we're going to put a flag on this unit that I'm working on right now, it's a French light unit. We're going to grab some, we're going to grab a French light flag and we're going to put it on there and we're going to see what it looks like. All right. All right. So let's start off by saying I just got a bunch of flags from Victrix, right? I ordered these flags right here that you're looking at. Uh, I ordered from Victrix uh, right there. Uh, now, these are Napoleonic flags carried at Waterloo. Uh, now, this is the, they give you a different code. Uh, VX, which I guess is for Victrix, FS002 and 003, right? Okay, perfect. And these are different because you're looking at the 30th regiment and you're looking at the 91st regiment 59th 32nd okay so these these and these are different and then in the bag here which i guess i'll open up here in just a second this is vxf no s just f zero zero one and i have a feeling these yeah i was right these are the peninsula war flags so one is peninsula two and three were waterloo so you might find some duplicates from like the fourth king here and you might see the fourth king over there as well because the flag might have changed after the peninsula war because a lot of these flags have the word peninsula on it, like they get that credit have, having fought in the peninsula. Okay, so, but we're going to go over those different flags here in just a minute. But those are the three British Victrix flag sheets that I've got. I also picked up an Austrian uh, flag sheet. I just picked one, uh, and it was the... I just wanted the ordinary and the, the life flag. So we'll put that off to the side. Now this is tricky. This one here, um, the, I think I get, need to give them some feedback on this. If you notice, they're both named exactly the same thing. VXFS001, VXFS001. You would think that both of these would be the same. You can already tell they're not the same. This is the old and middle guard flags. And these are the uh, light and line regiments. Yeah, so, and a lot of frills. <laughs> these 1812 pattern. Uh, I thought 1815, like these are 1815, 1813, you know, okay. And what regiments they are in, like 7th, 12th, 21st, etc. Okay, so we're going to set that off this one. That's an error in the number coding. I think one of them should be FXS002. That's my opinion. Okay. I purchased a couple of Victrix Napoleonic box sets and they come with a little pamphlet explaining the March of Eagles with it, which is the Victrix 
miniature game, which I'm not going to play, obviously, because I play Black Powder and how to assemble their models. But they also give you um, two units of flags and VX001, VX003. So um, you can see that they give you different units here on these two boxes. Um, one was flank companies, one was uh, center companies. So you get you get some flags there. Now these are everyone that I've shown you so far is Victrix. Uh, I only pulled these out. I've owned these for over a year now. I uh, haven't put them on the unit, but there are some Brunswick flags like there's Riddicel's Regiment, Spec. Uh, who's this guy here? Lasberg, Donup, and Naps. Not Fazen, okay. But either way, okay, three of these units are when Washington crossed the Delaware. Uh, and attacked the sleeping Hessians. That's three of them. And the other, I actually have three. Here it is, Rets. Uh, these three were the ones that were done actually at Saratoga. So, okay, so um, for my American War of Independence. But let me just go ahead and set these off to the side. I just wanted to let you know that I had these so that we can kind of take a look at them. Uh, I have some of these already mounted uh, this brand is already mounted so we'll get a chance to see that but there's gmb designs which uh i'm not sure what the gmb stands for but in my history america green mountain boys <laughs> all right now uh there are some gmb american guidons that i've already cut out and there's like washington's flag and here's like an and that's a Warlord Games flag that I cut out of one of their things. Okay, I think this might be Warlord as well. Yep, Warlord. And we'll show you both of those. Uh, over here, I ordered some flags from a company called Flags of War. Uh, flags of War. Uh, and then I also have some Rhode Island right there. So we're going to, I'll show you that in a minute. And. Perry Miniatures. When you order uh, Perry Miniature box sets, you get a instruction pamphlet of how to put their units together and color and paint uh, troops, which I find this to be an extremely useful resource. And I think this is um, this is probably one of my favorite little resources. Uh, but they give you some flags and different units. And you can see that I've used a set of those already. But, um, yeah, some, some French flags in this resource. And we're going to talk about these flags as well. Perry Miniatures. Okay, Warlord Games. Warlord Games, uh, the maker of Black Powder. Also, they make uh, miniatures, which this miniatures, these, these miniatures right here are Warlord miniatures. So, uh, just FYI. Uh, a lot of my armies are Warlord miniatures, Perry miniatures, Victrix miniatures, uh, but they, they make some, some great figs. And in there, usually when you buy a unit, they talk about the unit like French line infantry. Uh, and then they give you, or this one I think is the French late light. They give you some flags to use. Uh, early war, they had the I call this the triskelion. It's really not. It's but it's the triangles, and then uh, late war, they went to the uh, the three lines, red, white, and blue. Okay, so we're gonna show Warlord Games. So let's break this down a little bit. Warlord Games. Perry, GMB, Flags of War. Oh, yeah, yeah, one more. 
There's uh, a company out there called War Flag. Uh, it's a it's a website you can go to. You can find your flags there, and you can print them. Uh, this these set of British flags were printed at War Flag. Uh, uh, it, you you might also if you need Napoleonics, the site will link you to a site called Nap Flags or Naps Flags. And uh, they've got all different kinds of countries, Bavaria and Italy and Austria and Russia, Spain, pretty much everything. It's not completely 100%. Uh, there are some gaps in it, but like that's where I get all my NASA flags. Uh, I might not do that in the future uh, based on what I'm about to tell you here. Okay, and one more set of flags I almost forgot to tell you about. Uh, signer for flags, right? I historical miniature flags this set i've had for over 20 years uh 25 years i've had this flag in my collection uh, i don't even know if this company is still around in new mexico uh the flags look great uh and they feel like they're on a good set of paper but uh and this is, these are Burgundian flags. I just had never had an opportunity to use these. Um, I've, I was going to collect a 28 millimeter Burgundian army and just never did. 25 years. Okay. So I can't comment on the signer for flags, whether they're good or not. They look pretty good. Uh, and there's another GMB. You know, you probably recognize Henry V. Where do I want to begin, right? Where where do I want to start with these flags? You can use them all for one thing. They're they're all usable. You can put them on your on your table. I mean that's that's neither here nor there. That's they're all usable. But the quality level and the detail level and the not the manufacturing but the um, materials are slightly different between companies and they impact me and i'm going to tell you why or how uh, that might affect the way you use the flag okay warlord games we're going to start with warlord games because i think these are probably the worst flags uh and let me tell you why they're they're nice. Here, this 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 one might actually be a better example. They're nicely detailed. They have they have quite a bit of photorealistic detail. They have these uh, fade lines in them, right? Which uh, simulate uh, the flag bending and curving. Well. I like to bend and curve my flags uh, to make it look like they're flying in the wind, right? When you add this ec these extra lines, now I'm getting these extra shadows, which are kind of take away from the appear appearance of the flag. But most importantly, these flags... Uh, They use the shadow to disguise words like this says, because normally you have like a first battalion, a second battalion flag, and it would have the regiment number and they're like, this is the 24th regiment. But right here, it would say first battalion. But in this case, it says blurs, hard to read battalion. Down here, blurry, hard to read, read. You can't very see if it's first, second, third battalion. Okay, which is kind of cool in a way where you can use it for any of your battalions, but it's kind of like taking a shortcut. And I don't know if if you like taking a shortcut or not. Okay, so, but that's not why I think these are the worst. It's it has that's not why I think it's the worst. These are 
printed on nice thick paper, which is good. But these, th this is like a, um, a gloss pamphlet or like a gloss booklet thickness paper. It's not thin. It's not thin paper. It's n and and because it's photo paper, it's glossy. The whole thing is glossy, and uh, gloss is not that big of a deal because I can always spray my models down with like a dull coat or something like that. That's okay. But the paper is like a gloss photo paper, gloss printer paper, gloss photo paper. So the the issue is when you go to cut these out and you go to put them on your model, you have to wrap them around your flagpole, right? And when you start bending these and folding them and getting them as small as a standard pole, what happens is the ink along or the, the gloss starts to cause the, the picture to separate it 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 cracks there you get a bunch of different crack seams uh bet on there now i've i've discussed it with a number of different people uh and they they believe that if you wet this down to the point where it's soggy then it'll bend easier and you can wrap it around your pole um okay that's fine that's one way you can defeat that but I don't want to have to defeat that. I want it to work. Uh, so have I used these flags? Yes. Have I been extremely careful? Yes. When you go to fold it, don't, don't give it a perfect fold. It's got to be a rounded fold. So what I tend to do is take a paintbrush, put it behind there, and that's how I... And then I fold it over the paintbrush before, and I'll show you later what I'm going to do with uh, my French flag on the uh, this mo these models over here. And that's why I don't like these flags. Now I'm going to I'm going to uh, zoom in and let you see these flags, you know, up close, so you can kind of get a visual of what these flags look like and what I'm talking about. I'm going to do that with all the flags, the Perry models. Perry models, they make great models. The instruction booklet, like I said, is probably the best instruction booklet I've ever seen. But when it comes to the flags, they also use a gloss paper. It's, it's not as glossy and it's not as thick as that. Uh, when I used the, these flags, they did not crack. So that was good. That was great. I want you to look at something. And these are all 28 millimeter. You see the size of that flag? And then you see the size of that flag? These are both for the same models. I'm going to take a Victrix flag. That's a Victrix size flag. It's a little bit smaller than the Warlord and a little bit larger than the Perry. So you know who's probably right? Victrix. <laughs> yeah, you got these guys that want their flags to be super gigantic, and then you got these guys that have super small flags. Have I gone in and measured them? 156 scale, and see if that comes out, because that's 28 millimeter, 156 scale, and see if it matches with any of these millimeters. This guy is 20 millimeters, 20 millimeter flags. That was an easy measurement. That's 30 millimeters. That's a full 10 millimeters bigger than that. Victrix is 25 millimeters. So 20, 25, 30 millimeters. But you know what? If I had a unit with these and I had a unit right next to them with this, nobody would say anything. It would be, it, it would just look, 
it would look good actually in my opinion because ne never the same flag was flown on any unit you know and there were so many variations but um the bigger flag usually has more majesty more more grandiose you know look on the table so i always tend to go with a larger flag than would actually historically be accurate but then i also take this into account when i put a standard on in the standard bearer's hand i want the flag to fit between the hand and the uh, top of the flag standard right so it would have to fit in there which in this case is 30 millimeters so i could use any of this i could use a 30 millimeter flag it'd be giant or i could use the 20 millimeter flag and it'd be a little bit smaller but just higher up on the standard too small glossy paper is okay i think it's okay but uh yeah, the Perry flags, I, I appreciate that they took the effort to give me some flags, and I plan to use these flags, but I'm going to use them very sparingly, and I might even not use them. I'm not sure. Okay, so now we've got flags of war and GMB and then Victrix. In no, in no order, unlike these, Flags of war are great flags. They're, I give them 100% on, on, on the quality of the flag. The paper is, uh, a, it, it's a good sturdy paper, but it is paper. It's not glossy paper. Um, this just feels like normal printer paper, right? The image, and we'll zoom in on these, remember, the image is beautiful. I mean, I think it has a very nice look to it. One downside, it looks like it on both these flags, this image and this image, it looks like there is a slight blur to the image. So, uh, like maybe the ink ran or something like that, but it, it gives it a weird effect so that when i'm looking at it i can still read the word hope and see i can see the snake around the anchor and all that stuff it looks good but if you scrutinize it it's a little blurry that's all that's all i gotta say about flags of war uh oh one more thing flags of war also has a limited selection no i'm not going to say that i'm not going to say they have a limited selection they have a different selection that's that's another thing uh, that I wanted to talk about. This video is going on pretty long. Uh, Flags Wars selection is not, some of it overlaps with other companies, but sometimes you can't re rely on just one company You because they might not have, so if I was only shopping at one company, they might not have every collection of flags. So you do have to shop around until you find the unit flag that that company has. Uh, so, that's why I have such a variety of flags is because not everybody has every flag that I need. All right. So, uh, okay. GMB, GMB flags or Green Mountain Boys. Uh, they are on a very nice printer paper, very similar to flags of war. Uh, their images are crisp and clear very crisp and clear when you fold these around a standard the uh they don't crack and uh they they have these little cutting guidelines on their flags so that when you go to cut them like i use a straight edge and a and an and a exacto to cut them uh they cut perfect when you use these guidelines and i'll show you when i don't know if you can see that but there's like little guidelines right there to cut um the flag is actually printed larger than those guidelines so that when you cut along those guidelines you're actually cutting a slight like you can see on the flag above it you're cutting a little piece of the flag off but that's 
fine because you know it just means that it was perfectly printed all the way to the edge i really like green mountain boys or gmb flag and gm gmb designs they're my favorite flags uh they they have a good selection a good price the material is great and the printing on the flag is outstanding Okay, so, and once you've glued them and put them on your standard, you're going to see that I've got a couple of GMBs here, and just the, just the quality of the flag looks great. Okay, so that's GMB. Uh, and I, as you can see, I, I must really like GMB, but I've got a lot of GMB flags. Um, I had done almost my entire American War of Independence uh, with GNB flags and all those standards look great. And that's that's these guys. You can tell these guys are American War of Independence. Okay, and finally, we're going to take a look at uh, the two types of flags. The ones you purchase and then the ones that come in the uh, packaging are different. This is paper and you, it's a little glossy, but it's not, it's very minor gloss. Detail is pretty good. I'm really I, I like the detail on on these flags. These paper flags look really good. I'm I haven't used them. Um not I mean they've got some folds in the fabric, but not to the point where it takes away from the look of the flag. Uh and there was something I really liked about these flags, if I remember. The um the wrap, the part that goes around the standard, it looks like it's silk and let flexible. Uh, if you've ever been around any kind of military standard, you you know what I'm talking about. This is like that silky, um, not stretchy, but kind of, but it is. It's kind of like an elastic in there or something. And it just, it just brought memories back. I, I thought those were extremely well done. Okay. Okay, so this is a 69th, and this is a 69th, right? Um, King's color and everything like that. So these two flags are the same, same company, but you'll see, I'm talking about the green one there. Uh, one is a lighter color, this one, and this is a darker color. Uh, and yeah, the size and everything is the same, but you can kind of, the shadowing on this one is a lot darker than this. So I don't know. I think the, I think the lighter color looks better. Um, and the uh what is that the union jack it looks better on this one where the uh, crosses uh are centered where this it looks like the crosses are a little off center disappointed okay now let's take a look at just these just these flags this is uh this is like a uh, a gloss printer sheet and this sheet's fairly long letter size legal size um, I'm sure it's not it's probably one of those a4s or something like that in in English measurement but it's like it's like a legal size paper and it um, it's glossy and I'm afraid because it reminds me of the warlord paper uh, I haven't used it I'm going to use it but it just seems like I'm gonna to have to be careful. These look better. I'm gonna use these before I use these. And we'll zoom in on all these so you get to see what all the flags look like. So all these sheets, now I don't know about this guy because this guy feels different, the one that's in the plastic. I'm gonna open this up. But these, it, these came, when I ordered them, they came loose just like this in a Ziploc bag. You know, I had a Ziploc bag. These were in it. Uh, they were individually, you know, given to me like that. Okay, so let's open this up. 
All right, you know Victrix, they love their Ziploc bags. Okay, okay, this, this flag sheet, I like. This is paper. It's a little glossy, it's a little glossy, but it's not like photo paper. This is just very nice, nice printer paper. Uh, it was printed glossy, it looks like, maybe some kind of glossy paper. But this is going to fold just perfectly. This is going to work really good. I like the thinner, less... I like the thinner paper because of the way it folds, you know, and the way you can manipulate it and the way it soaks up Elmer's glue or PVA glue. There's the end skillings. Okay. That's a good sheet. Of, that's a good sheet. Top notch. All right, so now before we start assembling this flag, I want to give you guys some close-ups, and uh, then we'll do this last. Okay, this is the sheet that I just opened. We're going to work through all the different flags. And I'm not going to go through every single flag, but I want you to kind of see the quality level of the flag. Okay, so like there's the 88. This is Victrix. Okay, this is a Victrix quality second cold stream right so it says 11th company colors so they're like very specific you can see the 11 up in the upper corner same with victrix now we're going to use uh, this is one of the individual sheets notice how it has now it says peninsula on it because of this is the waterloo flag and you can see the you can see the fabric i was talking about in between the flags there king's german legion second battalion so it even says it right there you can read it on the flag whoa okay 40th regiment second somerset see those those flags look pretty good okay. you get the idea about the uh, british flags now let's take a look at these mid-size french flags right the uh old and middle guard yeah but you can kind of see the the gold frill and all that stuff on these flag on these and okay let's get it so you can focus in it and it you can actually see where it says second battalion right it doesn't they don't they didn't have to use these fake shadows right because when you fold and there's first battalion you're gonna when you fold these you'll get okay i might not be focused that's why okay let's pull it back just a little bit Yeah, one and two in the corners looks really good. Nice, clear, and crisp. Okay, and these are the line and light regiments. And it's too fancy, man. French. And you got the uh, frill around the edge. There are some fake shadows, but not to the point where it's disguising anything, right? It's not, they're not trying to hide anything. These are the Victrix, Victrix flags. See, they look really good. Austrians. Let's look at that eagle. Yeah, that's a lot of detail on that flag look at that heraldry it's insane but guess what you can see it and it says 12 on it right i don't know what that means number 12 number 59 okay cool okay i just noticed that having magnified it that's a lot of heraldry that's beautiful artwork you know what do you think um was that Mary? Okay, so Victrix flags looks really good. Okay, staying with Victrix, 
getting up close. This is the paper manuals. Uh, looks really good. Okay. This would have to be a Waterloo flag because he's got uh, he's got an honor for Peninsula and Karuna. So this guy must have been at the Karuna battle. Nice. Okay, a GMB American War of Independence. Look how clear and crisp that is. A couple of bullet holes. And they match up on both sides. Cut lines. Who is that? That's uh, congressional. Okay. Okay, so that same flag from GMB, this is the Warlord Games version of that flag. There any difference? Fake shadows. Still usable, definitely, for sure. Here's a couple of these flags that they listed as like they're unknown. Which is true. The, this flag did exist in the American War of Independence. And a lot of people just think it was for rallying so people would know where the regiment was. Whoa, lighting. Okay. <laughs> we got to sneak through it. And then fake shadows and the gloss is the part that I can't get past okay fla flags of war this is a Rhode Island flag can you see the blur that I'm talking about how the image doesn't look completely you know it's not sharp At this um, at this size or scale, it's not that big of a deal, but but it is a deal. Yeah, at this scale, it's not that big of a deal, but it is something you should know before you go out and buy flags. Okay, Perry. These are the real small twenty millimeter flags. That doesn't look bad. These guys look pretty good. They're just small and on like a gloss paper. Yeah, these flags look good. I like them. And here's the Warlord Games uh, flags. Okay, let's... What battalion? Is that 3rd Battalion? I guess it does say 3rd Battalion. Second Battalion. First Battalion. Okay, I'm mistaken. When I zoom in using the camera, you can actually see that it is... Battalion label is not uh, hidden. Okay. Stand corrected. And then this is the late French light. First light, 
second light. Fourth, eleventh, fourteenth. Okay. All right, now I want to show you the flag on the figure Flags of War. It doesn't look too bad, right? It's a good looking flag. Warlord Games, the Unknown Regiment. See, and I put it on these guys, so. I use these guys as my Pennsylvania associators. Need to touch up that little white. It doesn't look too bad. Let's see if it shows any evidence. Okay. I bet you it had cracked. Because it looks like I had gone back over it with some paint to touch up those cracks. Okay. You can kind of see right there on that fold where there's that little white speck. That is part of a crack that I hadn't fixed. All right, now war flag, right? Naps flags or war flag. They have uh, the printable flags. This one was a printed flag. I printed it on my EcoTank printer. And then I used gold paint to paint the edge gold. That looks like a good flag. I mean, in a pinch right for sure and these are some british flags that i printed and painted with the same nap flags missing a little detail right there in the middle of the uh wreath and it's hard to read those words that's probably supposed to be Karuna and Peninsula. We just looked at that flag a minute ago on Victrix. This is the Victrix version of that flag. That's a see the R and that's just much better detail than that one that I printed. But you know what? That was free. <laughs> You can give them some donations if you want. All right, now let's take a look at GMB. These are my favorite flags. If I had a French light GMB, that's the one I would be using, but I don't. And so, and I order the Victrix to experiment to see if they're any good. This is GMB. Try to get focus. There we go. I mean, that almost looks fabricy. That's good. Okay, British GMB. Now I put I put some serious folds in these flags, so sometimes it's hard to see, especially with lighting. Here I'm trying to get some light on it. There we go. Can you read? See, that's GMB. That's that's GMB as well. This is the 21st foot Royal North British Fusiliers. 
guess that's why you see where am I pointing right there the 21 Oh, wrong way. Let's go this way. Yeah, that's GMB. All right, I'm going to clean up my workspace and I'll be right back. It's got the 1st Infantry, uh, 1st Light Infantry, which was in Jerome's division. So I wanted to make sure I was able to use that. All right, so let's, which, you know, Jerome took part in the Battles of Waterloo and stuff like that. So let's go ahead and uh, cut this guy out. So what I do is I've got a uh, cutting board. I use a straight edge, an X-Acto knife, and we're only using this one here, not this one. But because they're printed side by side, you can use it to kind of help you with your straight alignment. And it's okay to cut a little bit of the flag off as long, there we go, because that's a frill. You can even cut the frill off if you want. Easy enough. Take your time. Make sure everything's cut out just properly. There we go, perfect. Now what I'm gonna use is, oh, before we do that. Okay, so grab some aluminum foil right you know from your kitchen or I actually have aluminum foil for my pallets uh, and for flags uh, so we take a piece of aluminum foil we're gonna I kind of smooth it out as best I can it doesn't have to be perfectly smooth but you you're gonna want to cut a piece of aluminum foil that fits inside the flag perimeter I think this is a good length and you can just cut it with your exacto and you don't have to use a straight edge just and if you can see that it's smaller than the flag right the flag extends out past it and you want it to extend out past it on all four sides I'm thinking that's a good little piece right there. Piece of aluminum foil. I'm going to be able to put that inside. The, it might be just a little bit too long. Because I want there to be a little bit of paper. Extended beyond the aluminum so that when they glue together and the aluminum's on the inside, everything will glue together. That's a good size. All right, so we got that piece, we got that piece, we got the standard. I use some wax paper to uh, when I put the glue on the flag that it doesn't get all over the place, it'll only get on the wax paper. Now, you'll notice that where the frills and the flagpole meet, there's a little piece of white there. And that you have to cut out this, you could cut it out with scissors if you wanted. Uh, I prefer the straight edge just to make sure everything's straight. But this little notch piece that I'm cutting out, there's no way you could get it with scissors. You'd need some kind of cutting edge. Okay. Now what I'm doing is I'm 
folding it, but I'm folding it around something that's white, uh, round. So that it doesn't stress the ink perfect so far. I grab my brush that I normally apply glue with. Don't need a whole lot of glue, obviously. I'm only using one flag. But I do add a little water to it. Um, that'll make the glue uh, absorb into the paper a little bit better. You want it to absorb, you want it to be soaked inside the paper. That's not going to be enough. So I'm, I do it about a 50-50 consistency. You need to stir it up so you don't see any smokiness. It's completely mixed. Looks good. Now I just... Okay, so the words in here and the words over there, okay, are on the same facing. Now I paint the Elmer's PVA onto one side, either side, doesn't matter. So that I could put my aluminum foil and stick it in there. Notice how it is starting to absorb and you can see it's starting to coil curl okay that aluminum is stuck now I'm putting the uh, Elmer's I call it Elmer's because that's the brand I use you can use any brand PVA and there's so many different ones Every country, I think, has their own brand. <laughs> and you can kind of see the PVA um, over painting. It's getting on the thing. That's fine. And also, it's okay if you get some PVA on the outside of the flag. That's okay, too. Because, again, it's going to dry clear. And I make sure that both sides are coated completely all the way to the edge. And I pay a little bit of extra attention to give a little extra around the crease. Okay. Moment of truth. Got to get under. Okay, hold on. Yikes. I gotta get over his head and under these. Really? Come on. How am I gonna do this? Might have to bend it. There we go. Okay. And then we just hold it down, angle it down so that the flag falls in the direction that you want it to go. Now you notice I didn't squeeze around the standard. I'm connecting the four corners or the two corners in the back. And then sliding it a little bit till it matches. Okay. And then squeezing from the back. Making it nice and gentle. I think the glue has completely soaked all the way through the paper by now. That's good. That's better than good. That's great. Starting to stick to my fingers. Okay. Some people will recommend putting some super glue on the standard at this point you don't necessarily need to do that might be good if you if it if you struggle with it but do that as a last resort ok 
Okay. Trying to line up the corners. And the reason why you don't want to see white, uh, you don't want to see the back of the paper. So what I'm doing is I'm kind of twisting, pulling on one side while pushing on the other to kind of get it to line up. You understand, you've, you've done that before. And then once it does, then I start to work all the sides to connect, pressing. Now, funnily, funny enough, when we get to the standard, which in this case is just one of those metal what wires I didn't use the included standard it was way too short in my opinion so I take my fingernail and I pinch the flag right behind the standard the pole right behind the pole use my fingernail Okay, that side's pinched. You gotta do that on the other side as well. I'm actually impressed that this figure stayed on this popsicle stick through this whole process a lot of times they'll pop right off because I'm applying too much pressure on it or something pulling on it or something okay now the flag is perfectly straight down so what I do is I just gently give it a little rub because there's some Elmer's glue uh, debris uh, on there Remember, the Elmer's glue is going to dry clear, uh, but if there's any dirt off your fingers, if you handle the stick and you get black on your fingers, that black or dirt might have gotten into that Elmer's glue. So when it dries, that's going to be a little spot or a blemish on your flag. So I try to rub most of that off, scraping maybe with my fingernail. Cleaning is what I'm doing. I'm just cleaning it off. But remember that you got to be gentle because you don't want to damage the flag art. Okay, so far so good. This flag actually turned out really good for being Warlord. And I love bigger flags anyway. The bigger flags just give more, make it more regal on the battlefield. Okay. Pinching behind the flag. Ensuring that it grips onto the flagpole. Prop it up. So the flag is not hitting the ground. But it is leaning back. Okay, that's better. So it's leaning. It's going to dry like that. Okay, let's give that a good 5-10 minutes to, to get set before we start with the curling process. Okay, it's been about 3 minutes and that's all I needed. I don't want it to completely dry. I wanted it just to harden up a little bit so that I could get a larger uh, diameter paintbrush. Uh, you can use a pipe or whatever, but I, I use a paintbrush. And I use rounded ones, not like that one's a hex shape. And then I kind of look at how I want the flag to wave. I kind of visualize it in my head. And then I'll put the... Uh, I'll put the base of the 
<clears throat> the paintbrush at an angle, you know, however I wanted it, however I wanted it to flow, and then I will wrap the flag around the paintbrush at that angle. And I'm squeezing, I'm giving that aluminum foil that's inside an opportunity to shape, right? Because that aluminum foil is what's holding its shape. And then I go back because you want it to fold one way and then back the other way. And we want to give that maybe this angle. Uh, yeah, this angle. Uh, yeah, this angle. And we're going to wrap it around, squeezing again, giving it a little bit of pressure. And then it actually will have kind of a, a spring look to it, right? Don't want to do too much. And then either the bottom or the top corner, your choice, you got to put a little bit of a, a tight curve to it. So what I do is I get it started with the paintbrush. And then I'll finish it with just my fingers. Okay, so you got this little tight little curve there. And then I kind of straighten it out a little bit. One, two, and then that little three. There we go. Give it just a, a little extra curve at the bottom there. That was just that. Uh, now you might notice, uh, I'm going to zoom in just you a might little. notice. Those little white flecks right there, that is actually the paint breaking. I was talking about how the picture actually can get damaged when you start folding it. That's it. Okay. That's an easy fix. That's a, just a French blue. I'm just going to touch that up with some French blue. I'm going to have to touch the edges up with some gold anyway. So that's not going to be bad at all. Okay, so now while I've got it kind of set in the shape that I want it, I go over the last bit with a coat of Elmer's, especially the places that might have broken. That will strengthen your flag and give it kind of like a, like a lacquer. Okay, now because I did that, we're going to have to actual, before I can put any paint on it, we're going to have to let that sit for at least 30 minutes. So what we'll do, what, what my plan is, I'm going to let that dry. I'm going to touch the edge with gold. I'm going to touch the cracks uh, where it's blue cracks with some blue paint. And then I'm going to hit it with a, uh, a dull coat. And then I'll show you what it looks like when it's finished. All right, we're back. Now, uh, you might want to notice that I've completed this unit. Uh, this is my French light unit. Uh, complete with a Grenadier uh, and a gear. I guess in the lights they call these different. They call these the chasseurs or something like that. But and they're also individually mounted uh, on on a magnet, right? So for for when I deploy them in mixed formation skirmishers or what have you. But I just want you to let me. You can't really see the flag straight on like that. So let's go ahead and kind of give you a 
give you like a little bit of an angle you can kind of get get a, a view of what the flag might look like in a formation right looks pretty good let's go ahead and set these guys up in a column There you go. Looks pretty good. Yeah, I'm digging it. First battalion, first uh, first regiment. Part of the sixth division. I uh, can't remember which brigade, but yeah. All right, now let's get a close up of that flag so you can see how I touched it up with some paint. All right, so let's take a look at this. You've got uh, the gold around the edges. You see where I touched it up with some red and some blue where there was cracks along the standard pole. And if you remember, there was some blue, I mean, there was white shining through underneath there. We got that fixed. There was a couple other places that was red as well. Uh, went ahead and fixed that up and did the gold around the edges. Okay, so that was my flag comparison. Uh, you got to see my Victrix flags, my uh, GMB war flag, flags of war, Perry and warlord and uh as a final thought a final note i put in a order today for some gmb flags of uh, french reg regiments and uh some brunswickers some nassau some dutch belgians i didn't touch the british i thought i had enough british flags but I did put an order in for all those, and those will probably be coming in in a few weeks. And uh, I'm going to start fleshing out my uh, French Second Corps. That's the first corps I'm going to work on. And um, and I'll, I'll have fun doing it. All right, guys. Hopefully this helped you out in understanding uh, the differences in the flags and which ones might be better for you and what you can expect when you order them or buy them. All right, guys. Well, I'll catch you in the next one.